So I've prepared my journal pages by simply sticking some pages together and then I have put some magazine paper in pieces um, using matte finish to stick it down. You could use Mod Podge if that's what you've got. And I've created a stronger page by doing so. And then I've gone on to add gesso to my whole page. And I stuck the pages together, give them a jiggle, peeled them apart, gave me some of this gorgeous texture. And then what I've done is I've printed off um, an image which I've then stuck down using matte finish, a really generous layer of it, and I've left it to dry overnight. And the last thing I've done, which is probably quite difficult to see, um, but will be able to see once I get some paint on it, is use a stencil with some textured paste to go through to create some script. I've also printed off a little bit wet there a picture an old vintage picture which i'm going to use on this as well so my first job today is to use some normal water on the back of this image and get the paper off the back to reveal the image that i've got so i'll let you watch but I'll fast forward it because it takes a little while. I think it will probably go a little bit cloudy and we'll need more paper rubbing off but while I'm waiting for that to work I'm going to put some paint onto this section here to show up some of the script so I've got some grey fairy sheet chalk paint and I've got quite a wet brush so I want to put it on quite watery Um, I'm obviously not going to put it on where the images are, just try to work round over the top of the script that I'd put on. That's it. I'll put it on this section as well. helping to blend it all in with the images. I'm just going to use a, a bit of dry cloth to blot it. Doing this so that it picks some of the paint back up. Show you that close up in a sec. And you see, it's you can start to see the script now. But I'm going to go in with a darker colour. First of all, I'm going to go quickly blast this dry. So I've now got a really dark black. This is called Melody, and again, I want quite a watery brush. I could 
put very little on, just a wash, like so. I quite like the not even look as well, with it having some light areas. Sometimes you get these happy accidents that happen. I didn't, I didn't plan that. And then <coughs> I like the way it looks. So I'm going to allow that to stay. I'm not going to try and get it even. I'm just going to go in with a tiny bit more black. Almost dry brushing. Yeah. Just helping to pick up those. The writing. Again, I don't want it all over. And where I've just got a little bit of a harsh line, I shall use the rag to just blot it out. That'll help. Okay, I'm going to go back in with my rag just a bit, just to pick up some of it. There. Okay, quick dry off. Now, can you see as I've dried it? That the pictures, the images have gone a bit more faded. That's because there is still backing paper left on the back. So I'm going to have to go back in with some water and rub off. As soon as I put the water on, the image pops out again. This is why I left it a bit. It's better to keep doing, to keep coming back and letting it dry a bit, even if you speed that up by drying it artificially, then keep rubbing away at wet fragile paper because you'll stand more at risk of taking off the actual image as well as the backing which obviously would be a disaster Obviously could have just stuck the image onto the page um, and you know to a point that would work and I could blend in the edges but this is actually part of the page now there's no edge it, it looks more authentic it obviously takes longer and some care but Yeah, she looks lovely now. I'll do the same the other side. And when I finally think I've got enough of the back off, I'll give it a coat of the back finish. You could use Mod Podge if that's what you've got. And it basically, it pops the picture out and then stops it from fading. But you have to have got as much off as you can before you do that. So, can you see now she's already there looking so much better. I'm going to use a stays on ink pad to ink up the edges of the, my page. pages are still quite damp with all the water from the image transfer. Okay. 
just scuff it up a bit. This colour is stone grey. I find it less harsh than black. I think black would be too bright. Gives it, this is a bit more authentic. So I'm just going to let this all dry off and then we'll move on to the next stage. Right, so I've dried it and once again it's gone quite faded but I feel like I've got as much paper off as I can so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my matte finish which is like a water-based matte varnish and with any luck yeah if you can see as soon as we go over it it pops that image out again as if it's getting wet again, but this time it won't fade it when it dries. Obviously it's partly, the original image was quite faded to start with, so it's not, and you know, I'm going for a vintage feel, but this actually is very close to the original. And you can see it's, popped her straight back out again right. compared to the other side which is just a few of the plants but I'm going to do the same with that and this time when it dries it won't fade again I'm going to go over the whole piece with a protective layer of, of this matte finish Every time it has a layer of paint or gesso, it's obviously strengthening the page more and more. It's become quite a robust, stiff page at this point. It's had quite a few layers on it. There. So that's it fully varnished. So we need to just let that dry before we can do any more to it. Now that it's dry, I'm just using a little bit of sandpaper to rub back to some of the gesso and scuff it up a bit. Get some more texture. I've got this page looking as old and authentic as possible. like quite an authentic scuffy page now okay so what I've done is I've decided to cut out my little images and I'm going to stick them at the bottom of my page and I have um, printed out on my printer it's back to front on the screen and it says angels are watching over you this picture is a picture of my grandparents and i just i really like the really vintage feel of the photograph and obviously i have bountifuls of love for them i thought it would be nice to do a page in tribute to them so I'm just sticking it to a piece of card and cutting it out just to, so that it pops on the page a little bit more. There we go. So it's just popped a little bit more. Now I'm going to have them trick stick these in place I might need a stronger glue just because there's lots of texture here but we'll see that's 
the light actually. There we go. Now it's quite dark around there, so I'll probably put some white just around them to highlight it. But what I'm going to do now is chop up the words. Sometimes I'll put it as a whole, but it's not going to fit well. That looks quite nice. I shall go back in with my stays pad and rough up the edges, give them a bit of age. Just smudge it just a little bit on purpose. little touches that make all the difference to you wouldn't just have clean bits of paper on old vintage so even though I've got it all over my fingers and it's gotten a bit smudgy on the paper I think that's really okay It's just left for me to stick them in place. So I shall do that, get the white around the edge and then show you what it looks like. Okay, so what I've got left to do is just, I'm going to outline using a Posca pen, um, my two figures so that they pop out a little bit. Quite a dark old vintage picture, so easy to lose. There we are. And then to just bring in some of the white, I'm gonna put some white whisk around it. hanging down over each of them. And that might involve me colouring the inside of the heart in black so you can see it. Again, using a Posca pen because it just goes on over everything. go. I hope you enjoyed watching that and we'll have a go at something similar yourself. Go enjoy, have fun. Take care.